Here we go again. Here we go. Here we go again. Here we go. Woo! Here we go. Yes, sir. Here we go. Uh-huh. We back in this piece. Where you at, big dog? Big old dog. Well, talk to me. Iris 292. Talk to me. Big Maddie. Talk to me. Yes, sir. We got some heat. We got some heat. Yep, yep, we got some heat. We got some heat. Yep, yep, got some heat. We back at it, baby. Uncle Ike and Uncle Rome on the No Line, No Shine Network. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the biggest and the toughest guys in the trenches. The one that always, always going to be there for you. Whether they making the touchdown or not. Ain't no football without the trenches. Ain't no sacks. Ain't no stopping sacks. Huh? Where you at, Big Ron? Yes, sir. Here we go. Gentlemen, I told y'all we bringing Lamar Maddie on here. Big boy in the middle. Big, big, big boy in the middle. What wrong with that, man? All I see is a fan. Right. I had to get them glasses straight. I got you. I got you, you baby. We here. We here. We hey. ready. Hey. We got the big Ladies man coming gentlemen. on. Bring the... All right, we're going to bring him on real nice. Where That's you at, right. Mar? Do what you do. You know how you do it. Where you at, Mar? Come on. Woo! Woo! No line, no sign. Yeah. No line, no sign. There you go. What up, what up, what up, what up? I told y'all, we bringing that heat. <laughs> Every week. Every week. Every day. No line, no sign. Yes, sir. Hey, 6'2", hey. 317 pounds. Come on. What? Talk about it. Nice. Hey, <laughs> you can get in the shotgun. You can come underneath the center. Come on. However you want it. He's going to put hands on you. Yes, he Wherever. is. He going to put hands. Alexa, stop. <laughs> oh, that ain't work, stop, man. Alexa. Alexa, stop. Dang it. Look, look at her. <laughs> she's a little hard-headed, but she, she, she listening. She's a little hard-headed. What's up, nephew? What's good? What's good? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Man, we blessed. How doing? We blessed, brother. We blessed. Ain't nothing good better. Good to have you on, man. I appreciate you for the opportunity to come on here and talk with us. The No Line, No Shine Network with Uncle Ike and Uncle Rome from Ike and Rome Show. I appreciate it, man. Talk to me. How was your day? Man, it was good, man. Just moving around, working out, getting myself right, and just, you know, keep my mind and mental right. And Trying to stay blessed and healthy. How is that's that, right. man? How is that taking care of your mental and you been, that's, that's really deep what you just it said. It is, it is. What are some of the things that you got to do? Man, you stay the course. You know, as an old lineman, of course, we always thrown in situations where we got to make the best out of something. Okay. So, you know, I apply that to my life a lot. And I came from my, my grandpa raised me, so I have to. A Navy background as far as him, so he had a lot of discipline with how he does stuff. So okay, yeah. it's really just handling things, and then you know, the career I didn't have, the path I didn't have, that's been something major you know, as far as the mental standpoint of it. Especially when it came to going in the league, I I had the most mental issues in my opinion when I was in the league. Okay, versus, uh, versus outside of the league or even before going to the league. Yeah. So, what are, what what are some of those things? Some of those pitfalls. If, we, if some of our young brothers is listening, young young ballers, it, what are some of the things they can look for? Uh, it's just, it's just the, the it's the transition, you know. Because uh, I did the I went the long path at junior college and then yeah. went to regular school and then went to the NFL. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was just more so going from. A lot of a lot of athletes deal with the going from being the guy or being that guy to being mm -hmm. being somebody one of the waiting guys for, wait, waiting for their turn yeah, yeah waiting, one of the waiting, guys. waiting to yeah. transition waiting to get in that so from college in, in all honesty um, I had a a part of my family's real like on the spiritual side you know and my grandpa used to pray for me a lot when I was younger a lot um, when I used to visit 
my great grandpa. And when I actually went to the league, I ain't gonna lie to you. When I played football, I just played football. I just ball. I just like to dominate. That's where I get my aggression out. Of. And it just got to about end of my junior year, senior year, when things took a, a turn where it was just like people were actually looking at me for the things that I'm doing. Me not knowing necessarily, oh, I'm I'm this good. You know, I just play ball. I'm good at it. Mm-hmm. You know, but from a I'm, I'm critical on myself. It may be it looks a lot better to a lot of other people than it does or feels to me. Um, mm. But why I say that is I attested my grandpa because it was just like a lot of stuff came out of nowhere and I just all take it as a blessing as far as like it was like I wasn't expecting it. I was just doing what I was supposed to do and following okay. my blessings and it fell that way. And I and at the same time, like I had the thoughts of just taking care of my family, not necessarily in football ways, but you know, get my degree and my education. Right. Right. Um, so that was a, a major thing for me. But football just happened and pushed me in and helped me to really get and accomplish those things I was looking to do. You right. know what I'm saying? Man, you talk to believers. So we, we, yeah, we understand that. We 100. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we are 100 stand, we understand what Paul right. talking about. Is, right. Is he still living? No, no, no. So I actually have – no grandparents that are actually alive. I lost my my grandpa, my closest grandpa, uh, in 2012, the year before I went to the NFL. Okay, um, so he happened. He got to see me play college, but he never got to see me play in the league. But he passed away then. Um, and then after I lost him, it's just kind of being me and my mom uh, ever since then. Yeah, you know, and my brother, but my brother just passed away too. So I'm oh, sorry man. to hear that. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that, brother. Yeah. How's mom doing? How's your mom doing? My mom, because I'm here, she's doing a lot better. You know? Okay. Um, it, it started off as me and her in the beginning anyways, and then it's just back to me and her because she lost right. her husband a couple years ago, his dad. So she's been going through that transition, but she got to see me play in my in this year in my before I called myself retiring, but she came, she got a chance to come see me play for the second time. She got a chance when I was in Oakland, and then mm-hmm. she got a chance when I've been here in Arizona, so – I mean that really put her in some good spirits. That's good. So you say you say you call yourself retiring. So you semi retiring, you on the fence? Man, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm more I'm more over the fence than I am on the fence. It's okay. just me personally from a from a body standpoint, like like I I'll never stop working out. I mean I always work out, but I always, you know, I'll be in there and I'll be doing so I'm like, man, I still got it. I still can do this right. and I still do that. And then every year I go into I used to go into a situation like Man, I'm I'm getting older, and I got these younger dudes in here, so I got I can't I cannot not play. If I go out here, I'm gonna have to get, finish and compete and do mm-hmm. what I gotta do. Um, and every year, I always amaze myself at where I think I'm at as far as my body wise, and I'm mm-hmm. always able to surpass that. But it's just it gets to certain points in, in my career, or, and I've seen when I was in the league with older guys who were over me, what they was right. going through just to keep their body in in tune and stuff. And I just feel like I've gotten to that point, and it's just like, do I want to continue to do that, or do I want to live a little bit healthier life, you feel me, as far as, like, my body-wise? Because, I mean, I was three surgeries deep before I even touched the NFL. So. Right. It was your knee, right? Was that- yeah, it was my, yeah, my knee, both my knee. I tore my – I broke my ankle my freshman year. So what a lot of people don't know is in, throughout college, I did one spring ball, and – Every spring ball, every spring, I was rehabbing an injury or rehabbing something that happened in the end of the season. My freshman year, I broke my ankle in the conference championship game. But then I rehabbed over the spring. But end of the spring, or towards the end of the spring, I tear my meniscus in the same leg. Oh, wow. Then I go right back to rehab, but I make it to the season. Boom, finish my season, All-American, do all that. Go to my junior year, boom, right at the junior year, start. I tear my uh, other meniscus during the spring season. So, boom, I rehab that, make it all the way back uh, to the season, and then kind of do it, tweak it again, last two games. But I didn't want to stop playing, and I feel like I was having a good season. So, I just managed it and then ended up having surgery at the end of the year. So, I never missed any, I never missed any games or anything due to injury. I always rehab in the off season, stuff like that. So, and I think that's a lot of reason why. My journey as far as, like, the beginning of the NFL was kind of rocky as far as going on drafting and stuff just because, mm-hmm. you know, at the, I went to the combine and 
they do all the testing. They do all. I found out my medial meniscus was torn at the combine. I never even knew that. But that because you're going through MRIs all day and, right, and right. all that. So they find every little thing. you Whether you write it down on the paper or not, they're going to find out. Right. So mm -hmm. I had a draft stock that fell. But I still, you know, got my opportunities and was able to, you know, thrive from that. Yeah. Now, what what made you choose the college that you attended? Uh, Youngstown. So I went to Butler Community College uh, mm -hmm. in Kansas. I don't know mm -hmm. if y'all heard it. I mean, a lot of people heard about Butler. We I heard about it. Been, been good for a while. What's but, that other um, school? I'm sorry. There's Butler. There's Hutchison. There's Independence Highland. Okay, Independence uh, the one that everybody that was on TV. Yeah, that they was on that uh, uh, that last chance. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Independence. Um, and when they was on there, that's when they were good. When I was there, they wasn't they wasn't that good. But that's another story. But um, <laughs> I went. I was actually going to go, and then I'm glad I'm glad y'all was talking about education and and, and pressing and doing that because, like, even in the junior college route, like I I could I was going to go to Tennessee. Uh, coming out, I was trying to. I graduated a semester early. Mm -hmm. did two seasons okay. but um there was a teacher there who i don't want to say it was him and it was more so me me taking responsibility for myself just being lazy with last minute work and there was a seed that and at that time when the portals was going off of your gpa and and all that and it was more trying to really calculate it they didn't accept my seed so i had to wait even longer and i wasn't trying to wait so i ended up choosing youngstown just because i went there on a visit um, I love my O-line coach. My O-line coach, uh, Carmen Basile, he's actually the O-line coach for the Patriots right now. Um, okay. He uh, he just was a cool dude. He's just more a family owner. So I just decided to go there because they gave me the best opportunity to showcase myself and then, you know, just be a family and then let me play and let me do what I need to do. Yeah, Everybody talk about, you went to the school. Your mascot was a penguin? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but... Uh, we was good, so right. I was really yeah. Yeah, Youngstown, yeah, young uh, young they always been nice. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. man, a lot of people, when I be like, yeah, you know Jim Trestle, I mean, that's where he started. And a lot of people right, like, right. look back on that. And Youngstown in general, a lot of these coaches that people look up to, a lot of these, these coaching trees, they don't know that Youngstown is where a lot of these coaches started. Mm -hmm. Youngstown or Ohio in general got a lot of good football. Right, right. right. Like, Period, and a lot of coaches come out of Youngstown, that whole little area. So, I mean, it's just a football town, also. So that that kind of helped at the same time. Young, Youngstown get on the two while you tripping. Yeah, they. I'm trying to tell you, but nobody yeah. wanna listen. <laughs> <laughs> man, Central Michigan, Youngstown, Marshall, all of them, man, they creep up on you and hit you in the mouth. Hit you in the mouth, and you will never know it. That's I think they, Youngstown they, creeped up on Michigan one year. Yeah, they, so my junior year, we played Michigan State. We was down 12-9 at halftime. Now, after halftime, it got a little out of control. But at the same time, we had them on the ropes. Then my senior year, we beat Pitt. We oh, beat yeah. Pitt. We beat them 31-14 at Pitt. Oh, yeah, yeah y'all was This was – I think this is either the year – before or after Aaron Donald left, because he was already All American and everything like that, and that's a that's a lot of reason why I feel like I got the opportunity as well, the like the way I did because right. when I went to the combine, I did all that the games they would bring up because they bring up games that they think are good and they bring up games that I think are bad. They they love me in that pit game and they love me in my All Star game because I had a really good. I, I want to say a dominated game against one of the best D tackles in the NFL right now. I'm not right, saying right. like I stopped them or whatever the case may be, right. but I had a game plan Hell and I put enough film out there for a whole game where you know it, it, it showed I had you know some talent being my height and what I was mm -hmm. already. Well, you six, you six two, right? Yeah, I'm six two. I was I was considered little. Still three seventeen, or you, how much you? So that was my combine way. Yeah, I was three seventeen. But my so that's plan, little though. Yeah, that's when I was playing. <laughs> when I was playing in the league, I was like three thirty. Okay. I, and and I had I it ain't I had to be three thirty. I was going against grown men who is three forty, three fifty across from me, running four sixes and four eights. Not a lot of people realize that. You that's see a, some, that's you another see thing some, I was. That's why another thing I was going to ask you, man. I know you 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 were in the league at the time of the transition. Yeah, uh, be lineman being able to run those four or five. 
Yeah. The important thing is how how difficult was that to control guys like that, like Aaron, like you said, Aaron Donald. Aaron it, Donald. It, like, it was like my first couple of years. It was a lot harder just because of the scheme we played, or it just like the offense we ran. My first year, my coaches was Dennis Allen, and our playbook was wide open. It was more of like a like classic ISO and downhill type plays and and pass routes and stuff like that versus the zone stuff going side to side. Okay. So um, there was a transition. I had to transition from that big body too because my year when I came out was an O-line heavy year. That's when Chance Wormack came out and then uh, okay. Fisher started for uh, pretty much like the, out of the top 30 picks, most of them was O-line. The first pick was an O-line. Right. And, um, and they were, it wasn't really a big on my height as far as they just needed big, big, is run that, blockers, run blockers that, in the middle, yeah, yeah, and then being able to be stout in the pass. So it was it was different because uh, like my I had an opportunity to go get some some people. I like Justin Tuck. I was I played with Justin Tuck. I played with Charles Woodson. And like I played with uh, Antonio Smith, who played for the Texans for a while. He's just D line who played in the league. Who I mean, everybody knows Justin Tuck. Like yeah. so who, I had a who's the toughest guy you ever played against? The toughest guy I ever played against. Yeah. Um, Most challenging. Uh, his name, his last name was Jenkins. He played for the New York Giants. Okay. Um, I, I believe his number was ninety nine, and it was the fact that he like you look at him and you think he can't move, like, right. but he hit you Make with some work. hands, shed you, <laughs> get around you, like, and it was just so hard to just get that lock in or get that good punch in because he was just agile for somebody that's 330, 340 pounds, you know. Well, I mean, practice every day was was like that. Justin Tuck played three-tech at practice all the time. You see him in the game, he go to the end. My rookie year, or my second year was Khalil Mack's rookie year. So, oh, so a lot of them dudes, like I seen a lot of them, I don't know, you know, the deep tackle Shelby Harris, he played for the uh, – Denver Broncos right now, uh, uh, and me and him came in together. That's one of my closer. But you see, he done transitioned to, but like him in general, just like he came from Illinois State, another small school, and he just turned into a monster. But he was difficult to buy. That's why I feel like he's been able to, you know, be in the league. Vince Wolford, you know, I know, I know, I know. That, that's a, that's a stalemate, and then, uh, it ain't you ain't gonna move. You just gonna get in his way. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That's a that's a real life. That's a grown man. Real life. Man. Man. So at that age, man. Like, I ain't yeah, because no he had been in the league a while by the time you got to him. Yeah, huh? he was almost in transition into retirement. Yeah, yeah. So that was a transition in itself, man, just trying to block dudes like that. But yeah, man. The the league was was there. My first couple my first game in the NFL was Monday night football, uh in Denver. And night game, of course, but that was that was the first game of my NFL career being active or just like actual season. I was on practice squad the first two weeks, but in my first play was a, was on field goal. They put you on field goal, so I'm going against um, Terrence Knighton, um, and then another. They had another this guy named Savage. These dudes together combined is about about 800 pounds, and they both lined up on me at the. Now, now, my rookie year, as far as my stoutness, even all the way up into that, like bull rushing me and none of that, that was a no go. Like I, I mean, even to this day, I still feel that way. But right. like you know, I set in stone. You know, I did what I had to do, and I dominated. You know, in my plays that I had to do, but that's what I had to experience first. And I was, I think, Peyton Manning's was second year. That's when he torched us through about five different records on us that game, but. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a different was, experience, man. Let me, let me rewind you back to a, a integral experience that you uh, transpired in your life right after college. How was it running through the tunnel? Your first NFL game. Could you explain to me that emotion that you had? Man, I'm. There was there was a there was a numbness. There was a run out there. And it's like we stretching, and I'm looking up. And they playing the Raiders song, <laughs> and I'm just looking around like, man, this cannot be real. But it's, right. the pre it's the right. preseason, so at first when you warm up, there ain't that many fans out there. But then when you go back out there, 
it's just like, oh my God. And then the Raiders, like they fan base is just it's just different. Yeah, they crazy. They just different. Like they yeah, they they, they they really support you. No, they support. They but they they different. And that just made the experience even more like remember when I when I really like was like, man, I'm really here, it was probably like our third preseason game when we played New York in New York. It wasn't even at home. And they was playing that uh that Jay Z song I just uh came out and they was playing that over the whole speaker. And I was just looking around, man. I said I swear I cried. Right, that's what around, I'm going like, <laughs> I looked around like cause during the preseason, during camp and stuff, you kinda going and you kinda going through everything, you going through the preseason. So you kinda getting those moments like, oh I'm here to leave. But that was the moment where it just all really just it was set, in. set in, like, man, like this is real. And, right. Man. Yeah, them checks was, help too though. I'm I'm pretty sure them check them checks help them tears out. Oh yeah, man, check, that's part it, of the it, crime. It, 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 even though, was, even, though was, even though I was in California, <laughs> they helped when I was in California. In California is different, though, man. They tax you out there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the tax, the, the taxes hit me. I've seen a lot more than I ever would see in my life. But right. I could have seen more if I was in a different state. But that's a whole right, right, right. I went where I got the most. I was gonna get the opportunity to get on the field, right. and then yeah. I had a position coach at that time. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, coach Sperano, Tony Sperano. Mm -hmm. He gave me the opportunity to play, and and I I, I thank him for that for life, you know, until the day I die, you know. But I went there because I was a lot of people wanted me to go to Kansas City. If y'all know, I'm from Kansas. So yeah, Topeka, 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 Kansas. Topeka I know. Top City. But uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of people there is Chiefs fans, of course. Everybody think I grew up Chiefs fan. I never grew up a Chiefs fan. I just honestly grew up loving football, so right. I really never had a. And I mean, I don't blame you. I have favorite players. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, you know, listen, you find we find no fault in you. Yeah, he was born. Wrong. He was born in 1990, so that was a pretty cool time. Yeah. You still had Montana playing quarterback, right? Towards the end. Yeah, very. Montana of his career. Marcus Allen now was there. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great disappointment. <laughs> and why, why I say great? No, let me tell you, not like not like they just, not like they was just, you know, a disappointment, but a great one. Let me tell you why. Because they built up, they built up the hope one year when they went like fourteen and two. Yeah. You know, Montana, he took them to the AFC Championship game, all to be let down. Yeah, man, I know how that feels. But, but. Yeah, Joe Montana, and they was oh Montana gonna get us here. Yeah. I went my first game like starting like on the field was in Kansas City actually. So I'm at the house and I see my mom, my coaches is there, everybody Ooh, there. Still, still. What was that feeling like? Yeah, now that happened. was that was amazing. Like I mean, okay. I ain't have a bad game. I ain't but we lost, of course. Yeah. That's <laughs> what this was when Kansas City this is when Kansas City was really making that transition and then like uh when Alex Smith was still there and they were still they yeah. was like it was good when Houston uh, was getting all them sacks and all that. But, um, yeah, they ended up beating us. This when Terrell Power was our quarterback. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, well, I, yeah. Oakland, it, Oakland was a great experience because I seen a lot. As so you had to block like, for Terrell Pryor? Man, I blocked for Terrell Pryor, Matt Schaub, Matt Flynn, <laughs> Matt McGloin, Derek Carr. I mean, that was, all my, we, that was all my quarterbacks at one point in time. Wow. And I went from a and I transitioned from like so, I started at center in high school and played D tackle. I committed to K State out of high school to go to play D tackle, but I ended okay. up not qualifying with the junior college. And then I started playing O line like full time. Mm. Felt like felt like O line was what's going to get me where I need to go. I still right. feel like D line could have did that too, but you know it just I went with the O line route. Um, but yeah, man. I, the, the whole transition from doing all that and going from center and then I played guard in college or my first year, I started at right tackle, actually. Then I went from right tackle to guard my sophomore year, then went from guard back to right right tackle at uh, Youngstown, but I was the backup center, but never took a snap at it But in practice. But I know center. Like, it's just – center is just natural for me. So, right, right. regardless, I'll go there. 
And I can play any position on the old line. The only thing that sets me apart, if a coach is looking at me, he's not going to put me at tackle because I'm 6'2". But I can play at tackle. I, can, I was all conference at tackle. Like, I know I can play great in space. My first sport or my first love and the sport I love is basketball. So my feet is right. I was just built for football. So, you know, I stick with where the money going to get me, and I stick with right, what's, right. what's right. And uh, But, yeah, and then when I went to the league, I was big, 330. I played guard. Then we switched coaches and got Del Rio. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I really switched or formed myself back into a center because we was pulling a lot and pulling around a lot of zone schemes. So I was Rodney Hudson's backup for a while. And Rodney, right. he playing for the Cardinals. When I, I seen Rodney, when he first got there, they had just signed Rodney to $44.5 million. He's my height. Now, he's 6'2", my but he just – like that, that. that's probably one of the most dominant O-linemen at his position. They giving him 44 for how many years? They gave, they gave him 44 oh, for five so years. Rodney, Rodney went through two contracts in Oakland all the way through. He went one for 44. And then they signed him again after the end of that, an extension for 33. So he's seen he all through, his. He went through all of that before he got traded. He actually missed the last year, and that's when they traded him. And then they traded him to the Cardinals, and he's still dominating at the level he was with Oakland. Wow. So, I hope he saves. Well, I hope he saves. Uh, Rodney is probably one of the smartest dudes. I he Because he was one of them players who, like, you see a lot of players try to get a lot of money up front. Mm -hmm. Try to get a lot of money in the beginning, like out of that 44, he was getting, you know, 25, 30 of that off the rip, okay. just off of just playoff, off of just bonuses or workout stuff because he already, how he structured it, because he already know. If you look at a lot of stuff, a lot of players on teams who get them extensions or them contracts never really make it through the full contract. Right. They, the, the, it's a bit, it's a business. Like football's a bad contract. <laughs> it's a bad contract. So, like, like, my first year, I signed three or four different contracts before I even, touched the field or did anything, you know, like, or I touched the field, but it was like, I signed one contract, get released, uh, the last cuts, then sign the practice squad the next day, then get cut from there, that contract becomes non void and then sign to the regular uh, active roster. That's a whole new, that's three different contracts right there in a six month span. Wow. So that, that's why I say that mental part come in is because it's like, you get cut and how the league is, they'll tell you, oh, we'll bring you back the next day. But then next year, you know, somebody else just got cut from another team that they feel like, ah, oh, it may pay him a little less to do the same thing. So yeah. let's get him, and we just going to sever ties. Right. So that Man, guy, it's, a it's, it's a cold business, but it's a business. Yeah. It's a, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, and that's what took me a lot. It's a, it's a business. So you can have the emotion in it, but at the same time, you have to sit down with the thought of your head that, you got to be who you are, do what you got to do, but it's a business at the end of the day, so they're going to make the best decision they think is and, and that's why I always tell all athletes to make the best decision that you can make for yourself. Thanks. When it's your turn. Yeah. See, that's why when, when they get talking about Dak and all the stuff, oh, Dak taking that, he doing this, get every dime you can, Dak. You want to get every dime they, because at they the end of the day. They're going to do the same with you. When it's time to cut you, like you said, they don't even make it through some of them contracts. You know, we see that, oh, he got seven years, $105 million. He only made $30 million, $20 million off that. They don't cut him. And right. the other it, all million. it takes is one year or one one year, one less tackle, one less touchdown, mm -hmm. one less interception, one less block. And they say all oh, your production wasn't the same or how wow. you structured this. So we just going to make this happen, and then we're going to make a shift. It's and that's why you see – they, it's always about saving money for everybody at the end of the day because they won't think about that cap space or they're going to think yeah. about what's going on the next year. They always – contracts, are, all contracts for the most part are all best based on guesses or based on what they think is going to happen or what they think should happen or might happen. And if it doesn't, then that's when they have the, the power to go in there and manipulate this, that, and the third. And then – you sitting there, if you got a good agent, then you, you might be straight. But at the end of the day, the agent is only can do so much. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Lamar Maddie. They call him Big Matt. Big five, Matt. five. Topeka, Kansas. What do you know? Six, two, three plus. Talk to him. Three plus. Three e. plus. you will put hands on you from anywhere in the line. <laughs> anywhere. Don't let him put. Anywhere. Hey, don't let him put. 
He get that hand on you. It's a rap. It's a rap. It's dangerous. It's, it's dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> They call them pain. They call them pancake pow. <laughs> <laughs> Drizzle some syrup on them. It's on. It's on. It's popping, man. Hey, it's it's popping. Popping. hey, you in Vegas? Are you in Vegas now? Where you no, in Arizona? I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm still in Arizona right now. Yeah. Okay, you and AZ. Look, yeah. uh, we pull up. We pull up to two spots. Whether it's in AZ, we can go to. We can go to. We can go to uh, uh, Kansas. Mm. We can go to Topeka. Give me two spots. If we pull up, we got to go eat at. If you're going to come to Arizona, you're going to have to go to Lolo's. Lolo's. What they got there? So Lolo's is the Arizona version of Roscoe's chicken okay. and waffles. Okay. It's fire like that? Look, I'll take you to the one that's gonna have to that's gonna get you right. I'm gonna take you to the better one. I don't then, care if it's in the hood. I don't no, that, that, it, ain't go, it ain't gonna be in the hood. But it don't even matter. It, it, it don't, I know it don't because I go there too. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if y'all like seafood, but there's another spot here called uh, Angry Crab, which is a crab shack. A crab okay. Shack. Okay. So you know, I'm a regular at either one of them. So okay. what about Topeka? We pull up to the crib. <laughs> Ain't nothing in Topeka. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Y'all ain't got no 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 goldfish sandwiches or nothing. Man, there's a cup. There's a there's a burger spot called Bobo's, and they got some. It's one. It's it's like look like one of them dining dry. It was on diners diving drives. It was it was on that that little show before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. We we'll mess with out. Bobo's. And then then there's a spot. Now this is in the hood where where my mom stay, where I live at. Uh, so we got a little spot that's around the corner that everybody go to. They got these cheeseburgers that's like they thin. But man, listen here. When I mean to tell you them things go crazy, I might not be able to I gotta tell I gotta mess out y'all the name of that because then it, it, it might get it might get too crazy. But I think yeah, it's man. Topeka. It's at the peak of yeah. Okay, okay. But other than that, I can't think of no two. Give me that no. real stuff, man. Yeah, and, and, and Topeka ain't too, I ain't, Topeka ain't too much in there, you know. We have our sports and we got our factories and you got your people. You know, Topeka's really a – it's a – I call Topeka or Kansas where I'm from. I call it a commuter state because, you know, okay. Kansas isn't really the most expensive place to live. Yeah. But a lot of people move there for that simple fact. And then, like, a lot of disasters and stuff that didn't happen in the past, a lot of people migrated there. Like I'm, okay. so I was originally born in Omaha, Nebraska, which is just this country. But I moved to Kansas. I could line up ten people from my high school, and about nine, eight to nine of them gonna be from somewhere else. Okay. That's how like it, it, a lot of people moved. I had a lot of friends when the Katrina era happened. When Katrina went through, a lot of people moved from New Orleans and stuff like that. So a lot of people like, oh man, there's black people in Kansas. I'm like, man, it's a lot of them. I mean, it, it's a lot. It ain't really that expensive to live there. Um, it's just it ain't it ain't a lot there. It's just more factory type jobs and things like that. Right. So I mean that's personally why I don't necessarily live there. I just I went to California and got turned out and it's just <laughs> it's good. That's the best of them. I ain't gonna look it I used to the best to, of them. Yeah, I had I, I did, when I went to college in Ohio, I had some of my closest friends is from California. They used to always Cali this, Cali that, and I used to hate hearing that. We used to argue about Cali Juco's. We used yeah. to argue about that too, which I know I heard you talking about the the high schools earlier. You know, yeah, I understand that. But when y'all start talking that junior college stuff, I don't <laughs> I don't agree with California having the best junior college or anything like that. I don't but even really, know about that. I ain't really looked into that. I, wrong, my view. California Juco's they don't play nobody outside of the state of California. So I don't understand how y'all got a national championship. Yeah, they got their own. They nobody nationally. That doesn't make sense to me. But hey, that's know, that's, like, that's 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 that. I mean, well, that's what they're trying to say. Players, I know a lot of players who you know didn't make it on the Kansas team go out to California to a JUCO and dominate. The thing I know about JUCO, I feel like California JUCO players. And I speak, I just always talk about JUCO ball because I was I was a different time because I learned a lot in junior college. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, California don't really pay for anything at all, um, so you really out there really still getting it out the mud if you then came out the mud. For right. at Butler, it was the same kind of situation, but they offer books and tuition scholarship. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't think that matter, but that that's three thousand dollars you ain't got to pay. 
and, and they paying for you that like that's a blessing in itself versus oh, yeah. you know, a lot of dudes go to california they trying to find money for books tuition and somewhere to stay i can believe that i played a lot i played with a lot of dudes who know each other because they was living in the same house together trying to you know go back and forth to school that when the last chance you that show they be showing in oakland how them players that's really how it how it be in the standpoint from a junior college one of my coaches, one of my high school coaches, coach at the the Kansas team. He he's a D lineman coach. Okay, yeah, independent. Yeah, the independent. Yeah, Coach Donaldson. Yeah. Keith Donaldson. And then they film out here in uh, Elac, East LA. Yeah, the basketball joint they doing out here, man. So, hey, look, you 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 made your family proud, bro. Yeah, man. That's yeah. all I could do, man. The yeah, the proudest success, one, success the story. Most, the the best thing I could have did and the, the most proudest moment of my life wasn't even making it to the NFL. It was going to the NFL and then going back my the the 2014 right after my rookie year and finishing to get my degree. Come on, that's right. that was my accomplishment. What you major in? What what was your sociology? I minored in criminal justice. Okay, I used to work in a little behavioral health with kids and uh, just because I had a dealing with that when I was younger as far as uh, my family and things that I went through. Um, and then I, I thought about being a probation officer for teenagers in that round, but I'm kind of still going to transition that when I get a little bit older because I, I feel like I still got a little bit left to do yeah, you as far as expanding to, myself. So we don't want That's you right. to put your hands on nobody. You want them to young. Right, right, right. <laughs> they, try to, they try to jump up on you, man. I don't want you to have to punch nobody in the ear. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have to tell you, I'm like, man, I told y'all Big Matty had these hands, man. Like, they gonna understand that real fast. They gonna, what? <laughs> man, when well, I, God bless. You. Say that again. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm saying God bless you, man. I appreciate you for this opportunity to yeah. get on here and, and holler at, you know, myself and Ron on No Line No Shine Network, and you know, expand your knowledge of what it took to get to. Where you where you at right now? From the right community college to Youngstown, the to, grind, man. He stayed on it. He stayed at it and playing for the Raiders, and you know what I right. mean. The Rattlers in Arizona, and and you you know you are able to talk and tell your story, man. So continue to tell your story. Your papa will be proud of you. I know your mother proud That's of right. you, brother. And uh, man, just keep grinding, man. It don't stop. We here for you, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate this opportunity. I really did. I was excited, man, when I got the man. message. I appreciate it, no doubt. Because the old line don't really get no shine, like y'all saying. So, hey, man, any representation, <laughs> man, we, we, we <laughs> own it. We got to take it, man. That's right. Hey. We spreading some light on it. Could you, real, real brief, before we get off here, Ron, you got a question? You got another question? No, 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 no. Go ahead. Before we get out of here, man, could you explain what no line – no shine mean to you, man. If you want to, from a, a standpoint as the O line, we do the dirty work. You know, we the ones that's really setting the tone for the whole experience that you're about to get as a fan and as a player. So when you see no line, no shine, it's kind of like it's like, man, that's a true statement. But from the standpoint of watching this this podcast or you know talking this stuff, it's just like this is an opportunity. Y'all giving the opportunity to really shed light on. You know, us, like us big men, we really are a community in ourselves yeah. as far as what we do and what we have to do. And the grind it really takes to make a – I feel like we take a unathletic, unathletic position and make it athletic, if you get make, what I'm saying. Big dog, make it sexy. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> make it hey. – hey, make the big boys look sexy, man. Make, Ain't nothing wrong make, with it. Hey, man, come on. They were the big boys is wearing skinny jeans now. I don't know why. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I said, come oh, I on, man. I look a little bit different, man. My yeah, chair, that's I'm right. Still straight, I'm still straight legs. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, talk to some of your brethren. Talk to some of your as, brethren. That's about as close as I'm going to get, man. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, <laughs> man. Man, we about to get out of here, man. We want to tap in. We want to tap in with you, man, later on this year, too. All right. Yeah, Let's see what you got going. All right, let me know, man. It's available. Be on the lookout for my brand coming out, Heavy Ambition. You know, okay. Everybody, right. it's it's gonna be some good, some positive. I also want to. I know there's a friend of mine who follows y'all too, uh, Dwayne, but he has a, a a platform and a brand called Dead Silence, okay. uh, which is 
really shedding light towards mental health and mental awareness when it comes to all athletes, when it comes to all in, in general, period. So uh, definitely tap into that. Absolutely. Appreciate y'all. Man, Man, anytime, bro. Anytime. Over. Yeah, I had to come it over. Was, uh, the, 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 the honor was ours. The pleasure was ours. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother, coming on telling your story, man. These young people need to hear that. Don't right. stop. Keep grinding. Right. Hey, oh, don't stop. Grind, hey don't at stop. it. Heavy, yeah. heavy, heavy ambition? Yes, sir. What can we find it at? You got a website or just? No, nah, my website. I said, when I mean coming soon, within like the next month, everything will be launched. I'm about to start training kids. I'm about to start doing a bunch of right. stuff, putting it out there more people to see you know this is actually helping as far as the stepping stone you know people can see there's people out there who actually pay attention to not just o-line but football and just the people who are out there trying to make a difference so man reach out to us man once you once you launch yeah for sure thank you and we can uh send out you know what i'm saying to reach a few people for you too so reach out to us let remind us let us know we want to be a part of it all right most definitely thank you i appreciate y'all without a yeah. question Lamar, Matty, heavy <laughs> ambition in this piece. Topeka, Kansas, what's up? Where you at? <laughs> up, Topeka? Stand up, Topeka. Huh? <laughs> Top city, baby. Top yeah, city right. up in this piece, boy. Y'all don't want nothing with Butler. Y'all ain't want none of that with Youngstown. Nah. nah. All right, man. <laughs> we out of here, man. God bless you, man. Those of you watching, check us out next week, 7 p.m. Pacific time. No line, no shine, Uncle Ike, Uncle Raw. Let's do it. Make it happen, Captain. All God right. bless y'all, man. We out. All right. Peace. Peace. Ike and Raw Tuesday.